Hey everybody, stick around because in this video we're talking about cooking during a blackout. And we're going to do some cooking, even though there's no blackout. Stick around. Thanks for clicking on this video. You may have noticed that my audio sounds a little bit different. I am currently testing out a new microphone system and I'd really like to get your feedback on if you like it or not. Let me know how this video sounds and if this is something that I need to start using in future videos. If you like it, maybe in the next video, I'll talk a little bit more about what I'm actually using. Although you can probably see it here on my shirt. All right, so we've got some winter weather coming and with winter weather, a lot of times you get blackouts. Now, while a lot of people focus on things like flashlights, light sources, water, stuff like that. One of the big problems that you run into with a blackout is how to cook. You know, I've said it before, food is morale. So you want to be sure that you can provide for yourself and your family in the event of a bad situation. Now, everybody for the most part has a grill in their backyard and that's great, but they are very limited in what you can do, especially if all you have is a charcoal grill. You don't necessarily want to have to go out, set up your charcoal, light it up, let it go for a little while before you can cook on it, and then go out and stand in the cold when you cook. And even propane grills are limited in their use. So you may ask, what is it that I need to get? Well, I'll tell you. One of my favorite things in the world, one of my guilty pleasures, is camp stoves. I absolutely love camp stoves of all variety. My favorite, of course, is the white gas Coleman stoves, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. Now, there are various things that you can get when it comes to a backup cooking system for your house. One option, of course, as I mentioned, is your white gas stove. One of the downsides is that you have to store cans of gasoline at your house. A downside with that is that gasoline, even white gas, does go bad over time. You can use butane. However, especially in the case of winter storms, butane only functions under ideal conditions. Once you get down below freezing, it's very iffy as to whether you're gonna get it to work or not. So my preference for a backup stove, especially for winter situations, is good old propane. These one pound Coleman cans of propane are a great source for fuel for a disaster situation. Main reason being that propane pretty much is gonna last forever. As long as you store this can in a cool dry place where it's not gonna be exposed to rust, it's not gonna get knocked over and damaged, this thing, you can pull it out 15 years from now and it's probably still gonna work like a charm. Now, there is a caveat to this. Right now, these things are very expensive. I was at my neighborhood grocery store the other day. These things were selling for $8 a can. Now, a couple of years ago, I bought a bunch of these for about $2 a can at the end of season clearance in that same store. But propane prices will go down eventually and it will go back to being a viable source. But if you've got some of these cans laying around, this is the source that you probably want to go with for something that you're going to store until needed. So now we're going to talk about what's in the box. So a while back, I was walking through a Walmart store and I came across this really cool item and I started looking at it thinking, man, I'd really like to have one of those for a camp stove or for a disaster stove for the house. I took some pictures of it. And as I usually do, I went on to Amazon to see what their prices were like. And I actually found this cheaper than they had it at Walmart. So I'm gonna go ahead and start opening this box up so that you can see what it is that we're gonna look at today. By the way, pardon me if I'm coming across a little rusty. It's been a long time since I've done a video. There's been a lot going on. And I'll talk a little bit more about my reasons for some downtime here uh, as we run through this video. But this thing was available in red and black. And when I went to look at them on Amazon, it turns out that the red model was a lot cheaper than the black model. So I ended up buying it in red just for that reason. So what we have is the Coleman 4-in-1 Portable Cooking System. Let's break this thing open and see what we got here. So one of the cool things about this, one of the things that really captured my attention was that this is not a single purpose stove by any means. This thing has got some really cool features that would make it perfect for doing a variety of different styles of cooking in the event of a blackout or some other kind of disaster scenario. Or if you just want to take it camping. All right, so as we unbox, of course, we have the instructions which I'm a guy, so we never use those. And here we have the grill itself. Pretty cool, right? Somewhere in here, there are legs for this thing, so got everything out of the box. All right, so we have the top, 
we have the regulator. We have cooking plates, which we'll demonstrate a little closer in a minute. We have a burner top. And there's the legs. So let me break these out, pop them on here, and then we'll come right back. So here we have the assembled product. It's got legs. We've attached the regulator. You can kind of look in here and see the burner inside the stove. And it sits up about probably a foot up off the top of the table. So now let's attach some propane to it. Also, before we came back, I went inside and I washed up the cooking plates and surfaces so we can safely use those. So you can see the, the knob on the front. I'm going to turn that around this way so I can see it now. So once you turn on the propane, there's a push button igniter and it fires right up. Wow, that is, that's power. Also on the inside, there's a water trough so that if you're using one of the grill surfaces, uh, the grease can drip down in there and it's easier for cleanup. So I'm gonna go grab some ingredients and I'm gonna show you how this thing cooks. So let's start off something simple. Let's say we wanna cook up some rice. So let's get our stove top in there. We'll drop on some boiling water. Add a little bit of seasoning in here. So we'll get a good flavor out of our rice. We'll get this stuff boiling. While the rice is boiling, I've told y'all I'd tell y'all a little bit about what was going on and why I haven't done many videos lately. The main reason for that is that I've really been struggling personally with trying to get my head around the YouTube algorithm. This channel did really well for a long time. It was starting to grow. Now it's never been a breakout success. And, and I understand that, you know, I'd kind of hoped when I started this channel that it might get to be one of those things where product designers might send me stuff and say, hey, we want you to do a show about this. But when you're only getting a couple hundred views on videos, that's not what those people go for. So I have accepted that this channel is basically going to be just me and my friends sharing our experiences and the things that we're doing. And if you guys like it, you like it. And if not, then, you know, that'll be reflected. Now, I know you guys like the camping videos with me and Mr. Fish, and I promise you we've got another one of those coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks. It's going to be awesome. Uh, I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. But overall, uh, I mean, I'm still trying to figure out what you guys want to see, what it's going to take, uh, what you guys want to watch. So if you will, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you'd like to see more of. Tell me what it is that I do that you like and some of the things that I do that maybe you just like, meh, I can live without that. I mean, at this point I can handle it. So just go ahead and fire away, let me have it. The problem that's been created through all this is that it's created a lot of frustration with me when I go out, film a video, spend a bunch of time editing it and it only gets 60 or 70 views. To me, that's not really worth my time and I struggled for a while deciding if I wanted to even continue with the channel or not. I still pick up a subscriber every once in a while. I've got a couple of videos that are constantly moving and doing stuff. I have had enough success that I've started to get some trolls and a few people that, that want to say negative things, and that's understandable. I mean, that's people. Yeah, I'm here to have fun. I'm not here to try to make this into something that's going to stress me out and it's going to make it hard for me to enjoy what I'm doing. I do these things because I enjoy doing them. And I hope that you're here because you enjoy watching me do this stuff. All right, so our water's boiling. Let me go ahead and throw in my rice. Uh, so you can see how long it took me to boil up about a cup and a, or two and a half cups of water. Throw this rice in here. Let that cook for about a minute or so, and then I'm gonna take it off the heat and then we'll cook something else to go along with it. All right, so we're gonna take the rice off. We're gonna set it to the side and let it do its thing. And in the meantime, we're going to do something else. So the next cooking surface we're going to use is this smooth top right here. It's a little griddle surface. We're going to use that to cook up some veggies. So you see the, you don't have to take off the stove top or anything. You can just set the griddle top right on top of that. Fire up some heat. Going. A little frozen mirepoix blend here we're going to throw on. And we're going to cook this up. Now the reason I'm doing this is, for one, just to demonstrate the surface, but also when I 
cook onions and peppers and stuff, I like to have them pretty translucent. I want to make sure they're cooked down. I don't like crunching into onions when I eat. I know some people live for that, but that is not my thing. Very quickly, this is getting up to temperature. I'm already starting to see some sizzling in here. Now, of course, I could probably do all of this cooking with a single one of these cook surfaces, but for the purposes of this video, we're gonna show you what each one of these things is designed for, just so you can see what it's capable of. Right now, while this is cooking up, it'd be a great time for you to just reach down there to that little thumbs up button, go ahead and like this video. Also, while you're at it, you can subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell so that you can get alerted to all of our upcoming videos, irregular as they may be, but you'll at least know when they come up. Then, maybe if you want to do some surfing later, there's a link down below to an Amazon wish list that I set up a while back. Instead of starting up a Patreon and asking people to donate money, I simply picked out a few things of various prices on Amazon that would be fun to have either just to help us on our adventures or that we can do reviews of on the channel. And if you're in a position to help out the channel, that's a great way to do it. Just pick one of those items out, no matter how much it costs, even if it's, you know, $300. And you got $300 in your pocket, just burning a hole through it. Spend it on us, send us something cool. So right now we're cooking at about half heat and this thing is really sizzling away. And this is a very capable stove. I'm, I'm really impressed with it so far. You know, one of the problems that you run into with a lot of camping stoves, especially the, uh, the lightweight isobutane stoves, is they're not really designed for cooking so much as they are just boiling water quickly. You know, they burn at such a high temperature that it makes it really hard to cook things without burning them. So something like this is great to have on hand because you can do pretty much any kind of cooking that you need to do. You're not limited in either being able to grill it or smoke it. And believe me, I don't have an issue with grilling and smoking. I love grilled and smoked stuff. Sometimes, especially if you have a household of picky eaters, you're going to need to prepare things that they're going to want to eat. And you're going to want a way to fix it other than having to stand over a smoky grill. Yeah, I don't know what the weather next week's going to do. They're talking about pretty heavy chance of snow, but we've also had two other such incidents in our area recently, and we got nothing. Other people a little bit further east of us got hammered. All right, I think these are about done enough. I'm going to get them off of the stove or get them off the grill and turn this off. All right, let's flip this sucker over. Let's get this thing going again and finish this recipe up. All right, so this last surface here, of course, is the grill surface. Some raised surfaces here to allow grease and whatnot to cook away. All right, so we got this nice and hot. Let's get some meat going. It's got some heat to it. We'll turn that down a little bit. We got some nice grill marks, but we don't want them too dark. So what do you think so far of the Coleman 4-in-1 cooking system? Is this thing cool or what? I mean, honestly, if you're in a disaster situation, if your power is out, you need a way to cook, this thing's gonna be hard to beat. It has so many options, so many cooking surfaces, and these are easy to clean surfaces. All I gotta do is take this in, rinse them off and wipe them down, and it's gonna be ready to stow it away for the next time. If you think this thing's pretty cool, leave me a comment down below and tell me. Also, if you've got a better suggestion for a stove in this situation, I'd like to hear about it. One thing I do find odd in this cook set is that this piece, they very specifically say this is not a cooking lid. So you're not supposed to like put it on while you've got things cooking. Uh, it's got another purpose and we'll show that in just a minute, but I do think it's weird because to me, it seems like it could do both. You know, it could be for storage and covering the top, but I don't see why you couldn't cook with this on. So if you've got an answer to that question, let me know, because uh, I'm a little curious as to what's up with that. So our chicken is just about done. We're gonna finish up this recipe, dig in and see just how well we did cooking dinner on this Coleman stove. All right, so let's talk about this last configuration for this stove. 
as you may have already figured out, this is a wok. We're gonna throw everything in here and cook us up some fried rice, camp style. Let's get our rice added in. Some seasoning. We have one final ingredient to throw in there. We are almost to everybody's favorite time, whether you're at camp or at home. Well, I think this is done. And that is it for our camp dinner fried rice. Look, the thing is, you don't have to be limited to what you can prepare just because you're in a bad situation. The power's out, maybe it's not coming back up anytime soon. Best way to deal with that is to try to be as normal as possible. And that's easier to do when you have the right tools. That right there would make anybody's day. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope maybe you saw something that you were interested in. I will put a link down below to where you can find this particular stove on Amazon. And if you get one, I'd love to hear about it. I don't make any money off of it. I don't have an affiliation, anything like that. I'm just gonna provide a link. And if this looks like something you'd like to have, go get you one. It would mean the world to me to know that something that I showed you, inspired you, and made you go out and get something that would provide for you and for your family in a disaster. That's all I need. That's all the satisfaction I need out of this. But I would like to hear about it. And I'd like to hear what you cooked on it. So I'm gonna go sit down and eat the rest of my fried rice. And until the next video comes around, prepare for the world that you live in, not the one that you wish existed. We'll see you around.